guys, welcome to My Little Paintbrush. I'm Miss Sarah, and today we are going to reminisce about summer and welcome fall with this campfire scene. It's one of my favorites. We've done a lot of camping this year and just made me happy to paint it. So I hope you enjoy it too. Remember that as we're painting together, we are learning together. So be nice to yourself. Try and enjoy the process, okay? You can always pause and rewind. Um, I may go a little bit faster than you are, that's okay. Don't stress it, okay? That's the beauty of recording. <laughs> so let's start off here with a flat paintbrush. Any size you like. I'm gonna use a large flat. I rinsed it in my water. Okay, now this piece has a lot of fun techniques. I'm really excited about this, but I wanna tell you guys, this fire right here is gonna be painted over. Okay, it gives you the freedom to create any kind of flame you want. But we went ahead and traced it on so you have the image if you want. But I'm gonna paint over about half of it, okay? Which, I mean, that's completely up to you. But the reason I do that is I want this swirly sky. And I'm gonna swirl my sky first and bring it down to about the very top of where that marshmallow starts. Okay, and then we will put our tree line in. So let's do this moon, it's really fun. You're gonna take a large flat brush like this, okay? And I have all my paint spread out here on my palette. First thing I'm gonna do is load up one corner of this brush with white. And then I'm gonna load the other corner, so I flipped it, and load the other corner, dip, dip, into my phthalo blue. And kind of decide where you want this moon to go. I wanted it in this corner here. Okay, so I'm facing the blue out and going around in a circle. And it doesn't need to be this perfect circle. That's what's so fun about this moon. Okay, and you can see I'm just gonna start using this brush with the blue on the outside and the white on the inside to create this shape. Now, you want to kind of decide how big you want that moon early on, okay? Because if you keep going into that moon, it gets smaller and smaller. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna put, put some more blue and phthalo, or phthalo blue and white on my brush the same way. Every time I dip my brush and my paint, I do it the exact same way. White on one corner, blue on the other. Blue facing the outside, and I just keep working it in here okay. back and forth now if you paint over this too much I'm gonna warn you if you keep going back into your paint you'll lose all these fun streaks okay the white streaks you have to know when to stop and be done with that all right so try not to go over it too much know when to be done make sure you paint the corner you can wrap your canvas as well. Now, if you feel like, oh no, I've lost my moon. It's too small or too big. That's okay. We're gonna go back in just a minute and add some white to it too. Okay, so don't panic. It's okay. Okay, but we just wanna keep on swirling. Keep bringing it out. I'm still loading my brush with half blue, half white. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way over here keeping it kind of like this crescent shape, this half moon shape, just like that. I'm gonna go all the way to the edge. Like I said, I just wanna kind of keep it there at the top of that marshmallow. I don't wanna go further down. If you want to, you can. That's where I knew I wanted to stop. So I'm just gonna brush now. Keep it with that smile shape there, okay? Just brush it all the way to that corner. Because that gives you some freedom to put your tree line in wherever you want. Okay, but if you if you kept doing the half blue, half white, you should get this swirl result. That's so fun. I love it. Okay, you kind of want to move quickly so your paint doesn't dry on you. All right, so I'm going to rinse my brush now. Make sure it's clean. Rinse it out really good. Now let's go back to the center of our moon there. I'm gonna put some white on my brush now. Just kind of paint 
in that center a little more. Okay, so if you want to bring it out, you can. Just make sure you rinse your brush because if you want to make that moon a little bigger, you want to make sure you don't have a bunch of blue on your brush that you just put into your moon there. I'm not going to make it bigger. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm going to rinse my brush now again. And I'm going to go ahead and start my tree line right here. So we're going to move to black now. My brush is rinsed. It's my large flat. Okay, now let's warm up. Let's just start putting black in starting at the bottom. Let's give our sky a second to dry. And let's just warm up our, our wrist here. I'm going to fill in the black. I'm not too worried about it. The wonderful thing with black is it covers so quickly and that is also kind of a detriment when it comes to black. You want to make sure you don't cover anything you don't want covered when you're using black. It's really hard to take it off. So I'm going to carefully go around my tracing here of my logs with my black. You can see I'm using the toe of my brush. That's the tippy tippy point. Okay, if my brush was standing on the tippy toes. I'm using that to go up into the corners of my logs there. Okay, and we're just gonna fill it in. Working my way up to the sky. I love this painting, it's just a relaxing one, but has a lot of fun things in it. And it reminds me of our summer. We've had such a fun summer. Lots of camping, time in the woods around a campfire. It's one of our family's favorite things. I'm going to go around this little marshmallow here. We obviously want to keep it white, right? So I'm trying really hard not to paint into that. If we do though, it's okay. Acrylics are very forgiving. Okay, so I'm right out here. Now we got to start thinking about our tree line. Okay, you just kind of want to decide what kind of a tree line you want. Do you want it more of a mountain or hills? Mine is more hills. So you'll notice I kind of had fun with hills on mine. But you can get creative there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Um, Let's see, I'm going to start, yeah, right about here where my sky is. I'm just going to do a hill like this, okay, just shape that in just so I know where I want my trees to go. I'm going to go ahead and shape that in, and then I'm going to do the same over here, and it doesn't have to be the exact same as the other side. Okay, you can change it. Just want to give yourself an idea of where you're going to put that tree line. Okay, so I've created my line there. I'm going to let this dry a minute while we go right into our trees here. Let's see, I'm going to come up there. Okay, awesome. Okay, so once you have that black in, you can also paint the sides black and the bottom as well. Put my brush away and let's get a line brush or a detail brush. It's a long skinny brush. I'm going to load it up with some black here. Okay, and we're going to put our trees in. So I have about eight to nine trees on mine and you want to do different heights. Okay, so it doesn't look like a straight line necessarily just to give it some de depth in your painting. So I have tall and short trees to show that there's depth to it. Um, let's see, we'll do a couple here. I'm gonna do one coming close to my moon. Um, let's see, yeah, right about here. So let's go ahead and do lines for our trees. Remember, you can do this different than me. You don't have to do this exactly how I am doing it, okay? But uh, one thing I've learned with trees, <laughs> over painting them for a while, I do not stress this line, 
okay. It's okay if your line isn't perfect. It's okay. Because it doesn't matter, and no tree is. I, I can't think of one tree I've seen that has the perfect straight trunk. So feel free to get a little bit creative there. Let's see, I'm gonna do one here. You just wanna really give yourself a guide. That's it. You can have your trees really close or far apart. Okay, I'm gonna do one here. And then one more, I think I'll do a little short one right there. Okay, so now I have my, my tree line there so I know where I want them. Now I'm gonna grab a small flat brush. If you wanna use a round brush, you can. It kind of, it'll work just fine. But if you have a smaller flat brush, kind of like this, okay, this is what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna load it with some black here. First rinse it, make sure it's loose. We always rinse before we use acrylics. Make sure we have water in our bristles. And I'm gonna load some black on it here, on the, the tip of it, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is shape a triangle by tapping with the brush as I shape a triangle. You see I'm tapping, okay? Now as you're tapping and you're creating this tree, remember that trees are perfectly imperfect, okay? It doesn't need to be exact on the shape. There's no right or wrong here. But there's a couple things to remember. You want to keep your tree getting bigger you want it, you want the, let's see, what am I trying to say? Okay, you want it to get wider as you get towards the bottom. There we go. Okay, so it starts smaller at the top and it gets wider as you go down, right? So we're going to move down and I'm just keep tapping. You want to keep tapping as you go and leave some of the sky showing in the background just to show that you can see through the, the leaves on that tree. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it again. So at the top, I'm gonna tap, gently tapping a triangle shape like that. Then I'm gonna build on it. So I'm gonna build another triangle shape under that. Only this one's gonna get a little wider. Another triangle shape. I just keep tapping these triangle shapes and let my brush land where it lands. There's no right way to do this. This is, you're just tapping and remembering to bring that triangle out a little more as you come down. But as you tap, you'll naturally get those brush strokes that look just like leaves or even needles from the tree, depending on what kind of tree you're going for. Okay, so I just keep tapping and building on it. My triangle's just getting bigger as I go down. There we go. I'm letting that blue from the sky shine through. Okay, here we go. Let's do our little triangle again here. This one's a little smaller, but we're still doing the same thing. We're just tapping and getting bigger and bigger as we go down. And we have a lot of things to add to these trees still, so remember, this is not it. We have more to add. So I'm just gonna keep tapping, tapping. I can kind of see my flame here showing through so I know my tree is going to get covered right there with my flame so I'm not too worried about that. All right so let's go ahead and do this bigger tree. Create that triangle first and then build on it. Just tapping the very very tip of that brush. Okay. Now you can do these close together or far apart. It's a personal preference on these branches and what you would like to do with that. 
I like to keep mine kind of close together, but as I tap, I let that blue show through. Okay, and I just get bigger and bigger as I go down here. Fill in that space. Pretty sure the fire goes right there, so not too worried about this tree. Not being seen. The tip of it will be seen, but that's about it. Okay, here's this one, but if I were you, go ahead and finish it. You'd never know where you're going to place your flame. We're all gonna see this flame differently, and we'll put it on there differently, so it's okay for you to go ahead and finish your tree all the way down. So you have options when you're putting your flame. All right. Sure, this little branches are on there well. Okay, let's do this one here. Do our triangle shape. Build on it. This is kind of a crooked tree. That's kind of fun. I always like to see where my brush takes me on the canvas with these trees. Because they're all a little bit different. You just kind of, you just tap away and let that brush lie where it wants to. Just keep tapping. Bring that triangle all the way out. Give it a good big base there. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill this area in right around the marshmallow there. Just like that. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and do this tree here. Do our triangle shape and then bigger triangles as we come down. And when you add the, the light to your trees, it really breaks up the branches. So again, don't worry too much about that right now. You're just getting the the tapping done here and the shape of your tree on there. Okay, so let's do this one here. We're gonna do last one. Get that triangle shape. Tap all the way down. You can have some crazy twigs that go out in different areas. That's what gives it character. Okay, this one just goes right off the canvas like the other one on the other side. Gives it some balance. Just go ahead and just take it right off. Just keep tapping so that you don't lose the, the tree look. Awesome. So good. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush now that our trees are in. I'm going to use the same brush now. Okay, so let's let our tree line dry. And let's put our logs in. So while our trees dry, I'm going to come down here to our logs and the first thing we need to do is paint them brown. So I'm going to mix some white with my brown. Pretty good here. Brown's one of those colors you want to mix a good amount of white in with because it is translucent. You can see right through it. Okay, so remember we're going to add layers to our logs. This is layer number one and the layer needs to have a good amount of white in it. So feel free to do that. Now let's shape our rectangles here for our logs all the way around. I'm going to try and brush away from the fire so that my logs already get that natural grain to them. In that direction, you want them going away from the fire. Okay. So try and use your brush to go to that direction. all the way around. I'm just going to give our logs the shape it needs first without going in the fire because our fire is yellow. It's also a translucent color so we want to try not to paint <laughs> inside our flame if we can help it. Okay. We're just shaping it right now. 
We'll add some more layers to give it that look for lo a log. All the different grains. All right, last one here. Make sure you add that white to your brown. Okay, we're gonna go all the way around here. There it is. Awesome. Okay, so we have our logs ready to go. All right. And while I have that brown and white on my brush, we're actually gonna go over here to our marshmallows and shape out our sticks, okay? Just so we have that layer, that one layer I was telling you about, we need layer number one. So right here, decide where you want those sticks to come off. I'm gonna go right to the center of my marshmallow. I'm using the toe of my brush. I'm just gonna brush straight off the canvas. One thing to remember about the stick is it is not perfect. That takes the stress out of it for you, right? It's not a perfect shape. You're gonna go ahead and try and line it up here and have it go right out the center. The marshmallow there too, to give you a guide. All right, we're gonna do the same thing over here, but I'm starting in the middle of my marshmallow because it's sticking in my marshmallow, right? Kind of decide where you want it to go, right off the canvas. Use the toe of your brush to shape it. Now this one, straight up, just kind of press right there to give me an idea of where I want that stick to come out. All right, awesome. Okay, now we're gonna go back to our logs. I am now going to, I haven't rinsed my brush, but if you need to add some more water to it, go for it. Your logs should be good to go to add some more brown. So now I'm gonna add another layer of brown to it. You want your logs to be kind of dark. So let's go ahead and add one more layer of brown here with less white. Okay. Keep your strokes going out. Now this time we're going with the ones here on the bottom. We're gonna paint them brown. Okay, brushing out. And then we're gonna shape it. So you're gonna shape this circle with your brush um, right there on the end of your log. See that? So I'm gonna brush out with my brown. Brown, brushing out. And then I'm gonna shape my circle because we're gonna start now to add those different grains into our wood. So I'm gonna go all the way around here Remember to take your time with this. If you need to pause for a minute to shape that circle, you can. But one awesome thing about our background is it's black. If you don't like your circle or it accidentally gets too big or anything that may arise while you're creating, just pause for a minute and wait for it to dry. Use your black to cover it and go right back over it. But as you are painting and layering, you want to try really hard to just brush in the direction of the grains when you're creating wood, no matter what you're doing. Okay, so we've got that now. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of black on my brush now for my wood. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. I didn't rinse it. I just put a little bit of black on the tip of it. Okay, I'm gonna come over here in my wood and we're just going to brush in some black grains. So brush out towards um, in the direction of your log. So you're brushing away from the fire and we're just brushing some strokes. I'm not even doing anything in particular here. There's no rhyme or reason. You're just adding those um, lines in your logs, the different shades. Okay, you've got some brown, you have black. Then we're gonna add some white here in a minute. You can kind of rub it if you want with your finger. You just wanna keep those grains going out away from the fire. Give it that so it looks dirty, a little more rustic. Okay, awesome. There we go. Add as much of that as you like. 
can start seeing that the wood is looking grainy. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with the circle here. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of black. So I have a little bit of black on my brush. I'm just kind of wiping it off because I don't want my black to take over. But I put some black just on the corner of my brush. And we're gonna go, go around that circle here with the black facing out, okay? So I have that black on the corner of my brush in brown. The black is facing out. So I'm going all the way around here. And you can see that the black really highlights that circle a little bit more so it stands out, okay? That green here, just brushing in a little more black in that. Awesome, so we're starting to see all the different shades, right? You can have some fun with your wood. Just keep adding whatever you like to these logs to give it that green. We're gonna add some white in a minute, but I'm gonna let it dry a second, okay? So let's rinse our brush out really well. Let's get started on our fire. This is kind of the fun part. Because our tree line should be dry. All right, but first, before I bring up all the white in here, I'm gonna paint my marshmallows, give it a little more time. So let's paint our marshmallows white. Let's go all the way around. I know they're already white, but this just shapes them. So if you have any black, like my trees kind of came into my marshmallow there. I just painted right over it. That cleans up any lines that may have been there before. Go ahead and paint it white and then we're going to add the, bl the brown shading to our marshmallow make it look like they're lightly um what's the word roasted by the fire just add a little bit of brown to them make the perfect marshmallow all of my kids like to burn them all every once in a while we get a perfect marshmallow. All right, there we go. So we have our white there. Okay, so let's add this fire in. You wanna just make sure your trees are dry. First thing I'm gonna do is load a large flat brush up with white and we wanna paint this white first, okay? Just so that the yellow is super bright. It just really shows up. So we're gonna first shape our flame with white, okay? All right, here we go. So you can shape this however you want. I am going to use the toe of my brush to give myself this flame, just like that, bringing it up. And I'm gonna give a base here that kind of wraps around, comes all the way up. And you see I use the toe to end the flame and let it kind of fade out into the sky. Okay, so you just want to keep that in mind. You just kind of want to let it fade away. Okay, I have another one here. Let's see. Goes up. It's like that. Because I think that's good. I'm going to use that flame. And this one will just kind of match up with it right there. There we go. Now have fun with your flame here. You can do this however you like. You can get bigger, you can go smaller. And just remember the background's black, so if you want, you can come back and cover anything that bugs you. But first paint it white. Okay. There it is, awesome. All right, let's just give it a minute. We're gonna let it dry just for a second. And go back to our marshmallows. So this is kind of fun with our marshmallows. I'm using my smaller flat now. And let's just add that nice brown shade to our marshmallows, okay? 
So I'm gonna put a little bit of brown. I loaded my brush with white. And I'm gonna put a little bit of brown on the corner and let's test it. So if I brush across my plate here with the brown, I can see how dark it is. I just want it lightly, lightly dark, right? So I'm gonna now face the brown to the outside of my marshmallow and it's like it's the perfect brown for this I love it okay so let's just kind of outline it a little bit and add that circle to show the top of our marshmallow with the brown facing out so follow your tracing that you have that outline on your canvas Follow it all the way around with that brown. Okay. I'm gonna do it here on this other one. Same thing. And you can you can get creative with this. If you want to show where you really roasted your marshmallow, you can really brown up your marshmallow here, like on the very tip of it. Make it really dark or have it a lot more white, whatever you're feeling there. Okay, and go all the way around. Once again, follow your trace there to fill it in all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to, once again, go back here and add my stick there. And remember with your stick, if you don't like it, the background is just black, so you can go right back in there and cover it up. So you can make it all squiggly or you can do a perfectly straight one. Whatever you're feeling. Do that one right there. And so I just added a layer of the darker brown to it, right? Awesome. Okay, it's looking so good. Our fire should be getting pretty close to ready to add our next layer. Okay, but while we wait just a minute, I'm gonna work a little bit on the black here, okay? So let's get some white on the corner of our brush. It can be a large flat or a medium flat, but you just wanna add some white to our background down here, so white strokes. So brush away from the fire here. Let's kind of brush that white in. And what it's gonna do is give the illusion that it's lighter where there's that glow from the fire, right? So anywhere you feel like there might be a little bit of a glow from the fire, you just add that white to it. And Let's see, there might be some hills up here, right in the background. Just kind of brush those in. Okay, now right along the tree line, I'm gonna go ahead and put some white there just to show that it's there. You can, it just really helps the hill pop up back there. Now, if you look at it, you're like, oh, it's too much white. Just brush in some black right over it. It's, Awesome, it's the easiest fix. So you can kind of play with that. But you want to give the illusion that there's a glow around your fire, right? Perfect. Okay, let's go back to our fire now. Let me check here, I think it's ready. Just make sure your white is good and dry. And let's Put some yellow and white together here. This is kind of where it gets fun here. It's our flame. We're gonna go ahead and paint it yellow now. Mix with some white, okay? Just to give it another layer of white on there to really cover. All right, it's starting to look like a fire now, right? There we go. Just gonna fill it all in. And you notice I'm starting at the bottom of my flame and working my way up. 
reason we're doing that is the fire comes from the logs, right? So we want our brush strokes to go up in that direction. Always be thinking about how things naturally work and use your brush to show that with your brush strokes. Go all the way up. Try not to paint my marshmallow yellow. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So let's let that let's let that sit just a minute. And let's go back to our logs. So I'm going to use this point or this line brush. It's also my detail brush. Okay. I'm going to go to my logs now. We're just going to add um, some white to them. There we go. So I'm going to put some white on my brush on the very, very point of it. Okay. And we're just going to outline where the fire is reflecting on our logs. So let's think about where that fire would be reflecting. So it's just right along the top of them here, right? And then I'm going to separate it by adding some light here and it's close to my flame. So as you're painting this, you just want to imagine the flame here. I'm going to put a white line there on each side of that one. And then along the top, and you don't have to have a perfect line. I mean, your log most likely isn't perfect like that, right? And let's go ahead and add that line now around the top part of the inside of our log there just like that okay perfect and you can add even more here in the center if you want to another little half circle or anything to make it look like there's grains inside of that log okay looks awesome Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of white here on the tip of my flat brush and I'm going to brush away from the fire with the white there just to show the light reflecting on the logs. So put a little bit of light on the very white on the very tip of your brush and just brush away gently from that flame if you'd like to to give it that light on your logs. A little bit of dimension there. Okay. I'm gonna add that circle in the center while I'm at it. Awesome. So this is kind of just something that, well, that was too much white. It's something you can just kind of play with as you go and have fun with. The idea is to just get enough dark and light in your grain there that it really looks like there's a lot of different things happening there in your logs. Give it that rustic look. All right. I'm going to finish up my, my sticks here. So I'm going to put some white on the very corner of my small flat brush. And the white is going to be facing, um, I'll do this one first. The white's going to be facing up so that it's on um, the top part of your wood. See that? Okay. We'll come in with a detail brush here to clean that up in a minute. Okay, so the, the white is on the top. And this just helps... Um, your sticks really stand out. Okay. They really show up. Awesome. All right, let's finish up our fire. Should be pretty good. Now I'm going to put just the dark yellow on my brush now. I'm going to paint right over the light here. The light yellow. All these layers just 
add to this flame. We give it different shades, make it so fun. Okay, try and keep your brush going the direction of the flame. Go all the way around that. Okay, so now that we have that done, while it's still wet, I'm gonna put a little bit of red on the corner of my brush. I haven't rinsed off my yellow, okay, but I'm gonna brush it now here on my plate. And we're going to add this red flame along the bottom. Okay, and we're gonna kind of start breaking up our fire. So this is where you can kind of decide where you want this flame to go. Go all the way up. And just kind of break it up a little bit. And let it start from the bottom and work your way up. And let your brush kind of lead the way here of where you want that flame to go. There we go. All the way up. I just like to show that the fire's moving, right? So you don't want to stick to one pattern. You just want to let that brush stroke go where it wants to. And you can go all the way up with the red if you want or keep it small and just at the bottom. I use the red to really show movement in our flame. So just start playing with that and see what happens. Awesome, just like that. And now, while it's still wet, okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue on my brush, actually. So this phthalo blue, I'm gonna put a little dot there on the corner. My son actually told me this. He said, Mom, you're missing the blue in your, in your flame. He's very technical. So, it's like, you're right. So I added a little blue here. We're just going to put a tiny bit. You don't want it to overpower everything you've just done, but it does add to it. It really does. It adds some movement here to our flame. There you go. Good catch. I like it. And if you don't want to add the blue, that is okay. You don't need to add the blue. But if you want to, you kind of add it here. He said it goes on the bottom, so that is where I put it the blue there and then a little bit can kind of sneak up into the rest of your your painting all right awesome love it so let that dry just a second i'm gonna rinse my brush here we're gonna do a little bit of finish up work real quick on our marshmallows. So I'm gonna put some black on my line brush or my detail brush. We're gonna outline our marshmallows real quick here. Just so they just, they really pop. Now if you don't wanna outline it, you don't need to. I just liked that it helped them stand out a little bit more against the flame. Marshmallow. Let's go over here and do this one. Just trying really hard not to touch the flame because it's very wet. Okay. Oh, I just did. There we go. All right. So this is going to go all the way around here. Okay. Perfect. Then you can kind of just outline this um, top part so it stands out a little bit there. Just like that. And we'll do the same up here on this one. And inside, just to show where it's going in there. Awesome. Okay, so let's just finish up here, guys. Add a little bit of a, I'm gonna put some white here on 
my detail brush. And we're gonna add just a little bit of that smoke coming up here away from our flame. Just like that. And you can kind of do this however you want. It doesn't, you don't have to do it just like me. Just imagine that you have some smoke kind of drifting away from the flame. And I just use my finger to just let it fade in a little bit, just like that. If you want to, you can add some yellow to it and red. It's up to you though. I just added a little bit of yellow. Awesome. Okay. Let's get some white on our brush again. Make sure it's clean. And we're just going to highlight a little bit of our flame here so it really stands out anywhere you want that flame to go. Just do a couple here. Let's see, I think I'm gonna do it here and have it go up. Here we go. Just like that. Awesome. Okay. All right, our final touch. Well, actually, I don't wanna forget the stars. Don't let me forget the stars, but our final thing here before we do the stars is to add some white to our trees. So just put a little bit of white on the tip of your small flat brush and imagine where that moon is glowing on your trees. Okay, and you're just gonna pat randomly here along your trees, along the front or the side, okay. Imagine that this light is just resting on these branches and where that light might be. So I'm just tapping it with my brush back and forth because you want to show that there's branches in the front too, right? That are, that the moon is resting its light on. So make sure you're not forgetting the front of the trees. You don't want to do like just the triangle shape that we've done before. So you have to remember now that the light is resting on the front as well. So I'm keeping it here to the right of these trees because the moon is on the right side of the canvas. So I'm just gently tapping the right side of the trees here. It's kind of in a zigzag motion, a little bit random. Okay, we'll do a little bit on this one too, but not a lot because the light is further to the right. But it really finishes up our trees and shows that they have lots of branches on them, right? Okay, and when you do that, if you don't like anything, just put a little bit of black on your brush and take it off. Easy as that. Awesome, guys. Looks so good. Okay, let's do our final thing here. Grab a stiff brush. Mine's round. If you want to get, use your flat brush, you can do that. This is for flicking, okay? So you want something stiff. Dip it in water. And I'm gonna tap it in my white here. I'm gonna wipe off some of the white. And usually I'll lay my canvas down to do this, but I'm gonna try and do it here. You can do it in a studio like this. We use these brushes, they're our favorite. So I'm actually pulling away from the brush. So when I'm flicking, I'm not pushing towards the canvas, I'm pulling away from the canvas. You wouldn't think that's how you would do it. You'd think you would go the opposite way, but nope. You just flick it and it's okay if you get some in the trees it just adds to it awesome love it all right i'm gonna sign it because i am happy with my painting we worked hard so we're gonna own it right and put our name on it so let's find a spot i'm just gonna put my name right down here in the corner miss sarah just like that Thank you so much, you guys, for painting with me. Hope you had a good time. Can't wait to see it. We'll see you later.